Hello, third graders. We are going to read our story of the week for unit three, week four. And I'm not going to tell you the title of this one. We're going to read it first. And um, you'll notice that it's not set up like our normal stories. I've chunked it paragraph by paragraph because I really want you to focus on trying to picture this story as we read and make sense of the story at hand. So let's go ahead and get started here. Follow along with this video as I read. Please go ahead and watch as I read this. Um, I will be jotting some stuff down on the pages as I read. From the earliest time she could remember, Galashka had heard music inside her head. So earliest time she could remember. I'm thinking this means like when she was really a small little girl. I know it's a girl because it said her head. Glashka is her name. During the long dark winters, okay, so they live somewhere cold. Blizzards sometimes lasted for days. Then her family stayed indoors close to the small fire. Hmm, a fire inside of her house. Very interesting. Glashka heard the songs calling to her out of the darkness, beyond even the voice of the wind. So we're personifying the wind blowing. I'm wondering what this song is. I'm wondering, does she really hear music? I'm thinking this might not be exactly what we think of when we think of songs. It might not be from the radio. The old ones of her village. Oh, so the elders. She must live in a village, which is a small community. Maybe she's Native American. The old ones of her village said, that is the voice of Narna the whale. Ah, long ago she had been a friend to our people. She was a friend of our grandparents' grandparents. She was a friend before we saw the boats of strange men from other lands. But it is now, but it is long now sit, since one of us has heard her. It is a great gift you have. Okay, so this seems almost like a legend or a lore where they have Narna, a whale. It's my whale, who is making these sounds and in their legend, only some people could hear them, right? Not many people have heard her lately. Must mean that Glashka has a gift. And Glashka would fall asleep, wrapped in her seal skin blanket, remembering their words. Okay, I'm starting to think that they must be somewhere really cold because there's blizzards, she's wrapped up in seal skin, and she must be part of some tribe or a native group and they have this lore about the whale and it being able to sing songs and only certain people could hear it. Um, Glashka must think this is pretty cool because she's remembering what her what her elders have said. It's something that makes her unique. The sea gave life to Glashka's village. Okay so there must be water nearby. That must mean that the sea helps them fish or hunt or do other things. The seals gave meat and warm furs to protect against the winter cold. In the summer, people caught salmon and other fish, then salted them to keep for the hard times to come. And from Narna, the whale, the people received food for themselves and their sled dogs waterproof skins for their parkas and boots, and oil for their lamps in the long winter darkness. So even from the whales, they're getting things. So they must really live off the land. I'm gonna write live off land and with help of animals. I wonder if Narna the whale is almost like a godlike figure or like a special entity to them. 
one year the snows came early. For three days, a blizzard bore down on the village. That means it came down hard. When it finally stopped, Glashka's family needed supplies from the next village. So supplies, they needed things or um, materials. Glashka asked if she might help drive the sled dogs. It is not so easy to drive the sled, her parents said. The dogs will know if you are uncertain of the way. But you will know the way home. Perhaps the, on the way back you may try. Now go to sleep. So they didn't really say yes. They said no, she couldn't. But maybe on the way home. So I'm going to say no, but maybe on way home. It must be pretty hard to drive those sled dogs. That night in her dreams, hmm, Galashka drove the dog sled. Oh, she does want to do that. We know that. But the dogs did not follow her commands. Huh. Instead, they led her to open water surrounded by ice. Let's picture that. Here's a bunch of water. But instead of land on either side, this part was all ice. Hmm. Glashka heard the singing of Narna, oh, the whale, louder than she ever heard it before. Huh, I wonder what that must mean. I wonder if it's a message. She awoke in the darkness of her seal skins, wondering what the dream had meant. So Glashka must be feeling kind of confused she isn't sure what it means to have this dream where they're not listening, the dogs aren't listening, and Narna's singing loud and loud and loud, and they're by this open water surrounded by ice. The morning was clear and cold as the family set out. The dogs made good time to the neighboring village. So that means that they were there quick. Before starting back, Glashka's parents packed the supplies into the sled. Glashka checked the dog's feet for cuts. She rubbed their ears and necks. Oh, she must really care for the dogs if she's doing that. Glashka's parents gave her the reins. Oh, that's what helps you steer. We'll follow behind you if your heart and words are clear. The dogs will listen and take you where you wish to go. So, if she goes in with a um, clear heart, so like being kind to the dogs, and her words are clear, meaning she gives good directions, they said the dogs will listen. They're letting her have this opportunity of independence. They set off across the ice. Snow swirled as the wind began to pick up. So it's getting windier. Suddenly, the sled dogs broke from the trail. Uh-oh, yelping and twitching their ears. What is it? Glashka's parents shouted. Uh-oh, they must be feeling really scared. They finally let their daughter take control, and all of a sudden, the dogs are really um, kind of going out of control. I think they hear something, Glashka called back. The sled dogs pulled harder. Okay, so they're trying to take her somewhere. You know when a dog is pulling at the leash? At the leash? Their keen ears, that means they're good ears, something that can pick up on something easy. Their keen ears could pick up a high-pitched notes that most humans could not hear. But Glashka, if she turned just right, could make out the eerie moans and whistles that grew louder until even her parents could hear them. Eerie means like spooky. So there are all these loud spooky sounds and the dogs are leading her in that direction. What could it be? This is a mystery. Where might they be taking her? The dogs stopped short. They were right at the edge of a great bay of open water. Oh, just like what she pictured in her dream. On all sides, it was surrounded by ice. 
and snow. So this is from her dream. Luckily, the dog stopped like right here. So they did not actually have to go in the water. That could have been really bad because remember they were trailing a sled full of supplies and Galashka at the back who was kind of steering them. If they would have gone in, she could have gotten pulled in too. Everywhere Glashka looked, the water seemed to be heaving, meaning going up and down and boiling, choked with white whales. Oh my gosh, whale after whale after whale after whale. It means there was no room. Her father came up beside her. Beluga whales, he said softly. Glashka stared. There must be more than a thousand of them. That seems crazy. For there to be a thousand whales in this little piece of, uh, or this little bit of open bay, that doesn't seem right, does it? The cries of the whales rose and fell on the wind as they swam slowly about. Uh-oh, the cries of the whales. That doesn't seem good. People cry when there's something wrong. So if the whales are crying, something must be wrong. The dogs whined and pawed anxiously at the ice, so they were nervously pawing. They wanted to help or they wanted to do something. Let's hurry to the village, cried Glashka. We'll get help. Okay, so picture this. All of the outside part is ice. All of the inside part with the water is full of whales. Can the whales get out? No, they can't because this part's all ice. It's all hardened. What will they do? Galashka's father, though, knew there was no help. They must have been trapped when they came here last fall looking for food, he said quietly. There's nothing we can do to free them. When the last of the water freezes over, the whales will die. Think about it. The ice is surrounding. As it gets colder and colder, the ice will keep going in the center. And this, the water part will get smaller and smaller until those whales will end up dying because there's not enough space for them. Oh no. But Glashka's mother remembered that an icebreaker several, several winters ago had rescued a Russian freighter that was trapped in the sea ice. A freighter is a type of boat. So an icebreaker is a really big boat that can break through hard ice. Could we call on the emergency radio? Maybe an icebreaker can clear a channel. So a skinny path of water for the whales, she said. She wants the whales to be able to escape through that path. Glashka and her parents raced back to the village. They gathered everyone together and they told them what happened. Glashka's father got out the emergency radio and put out a distress signal. Help, SOS. Beluga whales, maybe a thousand of them, trapped. We need an icebreaker. Can anyone hear me? Far out at sea, a great Russian icebreaker big boat named the Moskva picked up the faint signal we read you the captain radioed back we are on our way but it may take up to several re weeks to reach you can you keep the whales alive until then <gasps> that's a big job to do some of the people from Glashka's village started setting up a base camp near the whales so the whales are inside that water and they're going to set up camp right outside of it. Others set out by dog sled to alert the surrounding settlements. So the other towns nearby, they would go on their dog sled to see if um, they would be able to help. Everyone came, wow young and old, parents, grandparents, and children. Day after day, they chipped back the ice. At the edges, 
trying to make more room for the whales to come up to breathe. So every day with their ice picks, they're going around the edge and chipping it away to make more water. Look, said Glashka's grandmother, see how the whales are taking turns, how they give younger ones extra time for air. So some of them have to be underwater and they're letting the little ones come up for air. As Glashka took off or took her turn chipping back the ice, the song of Narna filled her ears again. Hmm, if it's her ears and not everyone else's, this must be something like she has a special connection to these whales. Maybe? Just like the elders said, she has a gift. She sang to the whales while she worked, trying to let them know that help was on the way. Each day, Glashka looked anxiously, so nervously, for a ship, but each day a little bit more water turned to ice. Oh no, each day the whales got weaker from hunger. Think about it, if there's ice here, and this is the water, there's not a lot of food in there, and there's nowhere else for them to search for food. They usually migrate. Galashka knew how it felt to be hungry. The year before, her village had caught barely enough fish to make it through spring. Sometimes the memory still gnawed at her, still ate at her. So this must mean that she's acting with empathy. She's empathizing with how those whales feel. Even so, she gave the whales part of the fish from her lunch. Ah, yes, you can see she's caring for them. The other villagers noticed and began to feed some of their own winter fish to the whales too. One morning, Glashka awoke to the sound of excited voices and barking dogs. <gasps> Something must be happening if the dogs are barking and people are talking excitedly. The icebreaker had broken through the main channel during the night. Oh, yes, the ship's here. Hurry, Glashka, her parents called. Glashka pulled on her boots and her parka and ran down the path to the water. So she must have been back at the house. Everyone was gathered. Off to one side, the old ones stood watching. So the elders in the community. They beckoned, meaning they called Glashka to join them. So really it was only the special elders of the community and Glashka. I bet it's because she has that special gift. Now, they said, let us see what the whales will do. So the boat's here ready to carve away a channel for them to, to, to swim through. The whales crowded together in fear, keeping as far away from the icebreaker as possible. On board the ship, the captain gave orders. He hoped the whales would see the pathway cleared through the ice and follow the ship to safety. So the ship's going through, leading them out, leading them out of the ice. But those whales are scared. They're all together in a pod and they don't know that they should be following that boat. The icebreaker slowly turned around and faced back out to sea. But the whales wouldn't follow the ship. Oh, they may be afraid of the noise of our engines, the captain radioed to shore. I've heard that trapped whales will sometimes follow the singing of other whales. We'll try playing a recording of whale songs. So from the boat, they're gonna play some music from the whales, actual sounds that the whales sing to see if they would follow the boat then. Glashka felt a shiver down her back. She must be, sh she must be scared or nervous. Narna songs, she whispered to the sled dogs. They're going to play Narna songs. Ah, this must be the music in her head. She must be hearing the whales singing. That is a special connection. Then the, do the songs of the whales echoed over the water. So they're playing the music, the boat's playing the music. Deep moans, high whistling calls, ancient sounds from another world. So whales are really old. They've been around for a long time. Their music has been here forever. 
But the whales would not go near the ship. Ugh. Again and again, the captain inched the giant icebreaker closer to the whales and then back to the sea. He's trying to lure them. But the whales stayed as far away as they could. It's no use, the captain radioed in despair. And we can't stay beyond tomorrow. Already the channel is starting to refreeze. So that channel of water that that icebreaker is on, it can't stay there for long or else their path will be frozen in too. Galashka was near tears, oh no, as she asked the old ones what could be done. Wait, they said, let us see what tomorrow brings. That night, the song of Narna came to Galashka again. I'm assuming she's dreaming again. Only this time it was different. Hmm. She heard the music and voices of whales, but she heard other music too. Melodies that she'd never heard before. While it was still dark, Glashka woke her parents. I've heard Narna again, she said, and I've heard other music too. You have to tell the old ones, so the elders, Glashka's parents said. The old ones of the village listened carefully as Glashka told them what she heard. So it is other music Narna is asking for, they said thoughtfully. Long is the time, but once it is said that humans and whales made music together. Perhaps the time has come again. Let us speak with the captain. So in her dream, she heard other music. So she's sharing it with the elders because maybe the whales need to make music and the people need to make music at the same time. Quickly, Glashka and the old ones radioed the ship. Have you any other music, people music, to play for the whales, they asked. The captain said he would see what his crew could find. First, they tried playing rock and roll. The electric guitar and drums boomed, but the whales would not follow the ship. Next, the crew tried Russian folk music. That's kind of like old, um, original music. It was softer, with many voices singing together. The whales swam a little closer, but they would not follow the ship. So they're getting on the right track, but not quite there yet. On shore, Glashka ran back to the radio transmitter. She had to talk with the captain. I know there's other music that will work. Please, please try them. Please keep trying, she told them. The crew found some classical music. That means like orchestra music. From the sweet sounds of the violins and violas, next to the deeper notes of the cellos, and deepest of all the string ba basses, all the way up high, a solo violin. So all those string instruments. Everyone fell silent as the melody carried over the water. So everyone's listening. The whales grew quiet too, listening. So no whale songs right now. After a few whales started to sing back to the ship and each other, gradually more whales joined in. So they're singing now. The whales are making music. Then they began to swim towards the ship. Yes, they're going to follow the ship to safety. Cautiously, then that means carefully. Cautiously, the captain started the huge engines and headed out to sea. He's trying to lead them to safety. One whale followed, then another, then few more. Soon all the whales were following the ship through the narrow channel, past the broken chunks of ice, back to the safety of open water where they belong. On the shore, people laughed and they cried. That's my teardrop. And they hugged each other. The sled dogs jumped up and barked. They tried to lick the noses and faces of anyone they could reach. Everyone's happy. Glashka buried her wet face in the fur of the dog's neck. She must have been crying because of how nervous she was. And now because of how happy she is. Such good, good dogs, she told them over again. Such good dogs. 
Now the whales are going home. She's saying that they're good dogs because remember, they helped steer her into the right direction to find them and be able to help them. On board the ship, the captain and his crew raised every flag. That means like they're celebrating. The music played as the captain radioed to say the whales were safe. He and his crew were finally going home too. Glashka and her family looked out to sea. They waved to the icebreaker and the disappearing whales. And do you hear Narna singing now? Her grandmother asked. Yes, Glashka said. But it isn't just Narna I hear now. It's something bigger than that. Something like a whole symphony of whales. So before it was just one, but now that people have helped and worked alongside with the whales, she hears a symphony. All of those different beings working together creates the beautiful melody, just like all the different instruments in an orchestra create a symphony, a sound of all of those different instruments. I hope you enjoyed this story. I know I did. <laughs>